How's it going everyone and welcome to Art and Design. My name is Torkir and today I got the new iPad. Check that out. So with the new iPad, there are a couple of wallpapers that followed with it. This is one of them. It's absolutely amazing. Just the colors and everything looks so good. Now this was probably made using acryl paint and you know, mixing it up on the canvas to make this kind of texture. But I started thinking, could I make a wallpaper like this? using Procreate on the iPad. Let's check it out. All right, so let's get right into it. So we're just gonna tap on the plus button right here to create a new canvas. We're just gonna go with the screen size for now. And now we're just going to select a color that is less eye straining for the background. So let's go with this one right here. All right, now this color palette that you see right here, I made a separate video about that where I took this picture right here and created a color palette from that. And if you want to check out that video, I'll leave a link to it in the description and also the palette so you can download that if you want to do that. All right, so now that we have a clean canvas, we're just going to select a brush. Now I'm going to go with this one right here, but you could as well use the oil brush like there but uh, I'm just gonna stick with this one the entire premise is just to put paint on the canvas so let's start with uh, this color right here and we're gonna work our way from dark to bright So I'm using this picture right here as a reference to understand where the colors are coming from, how they're flowing and all that. So I'll uh, show the picture right to the left right here so you can have a visual understanding of sort of where I'm going for or where I'm going to. Um, the main objective is to replicate the style and the colors, but have a different image. I'm not trying to replicate this image. I'm trying to replicate the style. All right, so now I've started laying down some thinner lines with uh, higher contrast in the colors. And I'm just sort of doing this in order to break up a little bit of the uh, dullness in the colors trying to give it a little bit of a starker contrast between the different colors and give it a little bit more punch i guess So having a reference picture like the one that we're working from can, is really, really beneficial because it really helps to quickly glance at it every now and then, just in order to understand like uh, what patterns are very prevalent on the pictures, uh, if some colors are bleeding into another colors, if they're mixing, if uh, some textures are appearing where you didn't thought they would appear. So it really helps to use a reference picture um, just in order to kind of guide your way through this whole process. And now what I'm doing right here is I'm starting to liquefy this. And this is where the magic happens really, because this basically adds the paint like texture to this whole thing. So now it really starts looking like it's, it was liquefied, like it was poured or it was flowing. And uh, this is a really nice feature in Procreate on the iPad. 
and uh, I'm using the push functionality in order to push the pixels around. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the edge functionality and this basically pulls the pixels together in the direction opposite to the direction of the pencil. And so that allows us to clean up some of these problem areas right here where I've basically been pushing and pulling the pixels around, making them making them a little bit blurry. So using the edge tool, I can sort of go on these edges and sort of refine them and, and give them a sharper look, basically. Now the edge tool can also help to create texture. So if you go with the edge tool over an area which is mm, sort of looks like a gradient, it can actually create a texture in the gradient. So you can kind of create texture where there previously wasn't. And you can also use it to kind of sculpt different shapes. And like what I'm doing right here, I'm sort of using the edge tool to kind of sculpt the shape of the edges in order to make them a little bit thicker or, or thinner or change the angle of a line or something like that. It's a really powerful feature to use in a painting like this where everything is kind of liquidy and should look like a liquid. Alright, so now I started working on the paint splatter right here. And this is where we see the edge tool functionality really come into its own. So I'm basically just going over the edges of the lines over here and sort of sculpting them to what I want to see from it. So the look that I'm trying to achieve here is the sort of look that you would get if you held the brush and you would just kind of splattered, accidentally splattered some paint on the canvas. And that's the kind of look that we're kind of going for here. Now, every now and then I pick up the brush tool again and uh, sort of add just a little bit more texture or some color to places where I would like to see more of that color. So I'm just sort of adding that right here. All right, so I think I'm pretty happy with the color balance right here. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to insert a photo and overlay that on top of the picture. So I'm just going to select from this library right here. Now, this is a library that I've been uh, basically creating for the past three years or so. And it's a collection of textures and all sorts of landscapes from plants and animals and uh, rocks and sky and, you know, name it. There are so many things right here. And I would really like to um, publish this to the community. I'm kind of working on the details right now, but uh, let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see this library available to you uh, sometime in the future. There are about, I don't know, like, 1200 pictures right now and uh, it's counting every day and the great thing about having access to a library like this is that you can take a picture like this which is uh, the bonnet of the car from a friend of mine and uh, he took this picture and it's absolutely great it's like these frost roses uh, on the bonnet it's just fantastic now anyway <laughs> what you can do with it is you can overlay them on top of each other and even use them like i'm doing here to add texture where there previously wasn't. So I'm using different layer effects in order to make certain colors pop out or certain uh, luminosities drop down. Now you can create this texture, of course, using traditional methods of simply painting this in with a brush, but I think it's it adds a lot to the experimentation phase to be able to quickly grab a picture with a texture that you're sort of going for in order to understand how that picture uh, impacts the composition. If you're composing an artwork instead of painting it, uh, it can be really, really beneficial to have a, a library like this. Now, that's going to be it for this video. I want to thank you all very much for watching. 
uh, do leave a like on this video if you liked it um, let me know in the comments down below if you would like to see more videos about Procreate or any other subjects in the future. I'm going to leave you off with the time lapse of this artwork being drawn from beginning to end. Thank you all so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.